It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, the show where vibes go to get harsh. You better now, man? Yeah. You better? Yeah. Feel all right, huh? I am your host, Stimulator, and as regular viewers of my fucking show may recall, a few months back, me and my crew of submedia slaves put out a report on the masturbatory spectacle known as People's Climate March, aka Circle Jerk 2015, which is being coordinated this fall by corporate greenwashers of 350.org and the collectivist petition slingers of Abbas. Hi there, would you like to sign my petition? No way, you freaking pinko! Well, apparently by suggesting that the marching in a Wall Street funded parade to address climate change was essentially the same as publicly slapping your salami with 300,000 of your closest friends, I must have touched a nerve. Because no sooner that this shit hit the interwebs, that my inbox began to fill up with shrilly worded emails from mainstream environmentalists, and concerned messages from peeps who said they agreed with me for the most part, but thought I had gone a bit too far. Fuck you, you fuckity fucker. What will you think when you are being basted in the broth of God's righteous indignation, motherfucker? <laughs> Lol, and your website sucks ass big time biatch. And it turns out that y'all were right. Because in the lead up to the historic COP21 climate conference kicking off November 30th in Paris, and no doubt influenced by the unprecedented popular demand for a more sensible energy policy. There's even people who are trying who are part of the government. A lot of Americans are going solar and becoming more energy efficient. Not because of tree huggers, although uh, trees, you know, are important. Trees are still my jam. Last month, the man your mama calls Obama tabled new legislation called the America's Clean Power Plan, a comprehensive wide-ranging initiative to restructure the United States capitalist economy and roll back emissions just in the nick of time to save humanity from cataclysmic runaway climate change. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. The role of corporate environmental NGOs like 350.org and smooth talking shit peddlers like Obama is to promote the idea that a cushy transition to a new green capitalist economy is possible. If only enough peeps would just put their faith in the democratic process either by voting or expressing their right to peacefully march in a giant fucking circle. This is the one that's gonna change everything. But despite this comforting illusion, the hard fucking truth is that unless it is actually stopped, capitalism will continue to destroy the fucking planet. And the only way it can be stopped is by physically shutting shit down by direct fucking action. The United States is the second largest polluter on Earth behind China. To truly make a difference, we must overthrow the United States government. Like in Germany, where for the past three years, eco-defenders have persistently put their bodies on the line to disrupt the operations of a massive fucking coal mine owned by German energy conglomerate RWE. This sprawling industrial monstrosity is the single largest source of greenhouse gas emissions on the continent. And the insane looking industrial excavators used to pull low grade brown coal out of the ground are some of the largest machines in the fucking world. The mine is located in the steadily declining Hamback Forest, one of the last remaining millennial forests in Western Europe, and consists of an interconnected system of conveyor belts and train stations which they transport coal to a nearby power station. Shutting down any link in this chain can deactivate the whole fucking thing. The sheer size of the mine, combined with the geography of the surrounded territory, makes it an ideal playground for the centralized actions carried out by small crews and troublemakers in the region have been doing just that, occupying the surrounding forest with presets, blocking railroads and chaining themselves down to excavators and other machinery to grind production to a halt. In the past two weeks the mine has been shut down twice by activists chaining themselves to the main conveyor belt, and the repeated use of these tactics is beginning to have a serious effect on the company's bottom line. It really needs people to come here, to stay here, and do direct action. It's really a lot of sensitive infrastructure here that could be seriously harmed by just a small group of people. Whoa, this just took a dark turn! Anti-mining resistance is also heating up in motherfucking Greece, where residents of the northern peninsula of Alkiriki have been fighting for years against the development of the Mount Scudis open pit gold mine 
owned by Vancouver-based El Dorado Gold. Construction of the site, which is already well underway, requires the clear cutting of a local forest, and critics charge that the mine, which is situated above a local aquifer, will inevitably leak all sorts of toxic shit into the local water supply. Anarchists and other peace have lent their support to the struggle against goodies, which has included a February 2013 arson that torched the company's offices and damaged their machinery, as well as militant solidarity marches in the cities of Thessaloniki and Athens, where supporters have engaged the Greek riot pigs in street clashes. This struggle has heated up over the past several weeks, with the Syriza government temporarily suspending the operation of the mine on August 19th, and about 2,000 peeps heeding a call from Beyond Europe coalition to join a demonstration at the site on August 23rd, which soon led to intense clashes between militants and the Greek popo. Okay. People don't just freely walk in. So because we're blocking pipelines out, we're not blocking everybody out. I'm not a pipeline though. She has been on high alert at the Unistone camp. Over the past couple of weeks, after it was discovered that the RC and pigs had begun massing in the surrounding area and warning First Nations Bank Council leaders that the large-scale policing operation was imminent. This sharp escalation follows repeated attempt by Chevron and TransCanada employees and RCMP agents to gain access to the site. Here, let's go back to your car, because you guys don't have permission to come across here. In 2009, members of the Unistone clan set up the camp as a means of blocking the development of oil and natural gas pipelines through unceded Wet'suwet'en territory. And since then, it has become a central rallying cry for opponents of the motherfucking tar sands, as this infrastructure is necessary for its further expansion. On August 27th, a group of 50 prominent organizations and individuals sent a letter to the RCMP, provincial and federal governments warning against any attempt at move on the camp. In an online statement entitled, We Stand with the Unistoten, was quickly signed by thousands more organizations and individuals across the world. In the face of this widespread support, the RCMP was forced to publish a rare press release announcing that they had no intention of taking down the camp. Regardless of the statement from the RCMP pigs, the situation at the time of writing is still extremely volatile, and peeps should be getting ready to put plans into action if any move is made against the camp. We're not afraid of the Harper government. We're not afraid of anybody that's going to try and forcefully put their project through our territory when we've already said no. So we had people make vows that they will shut down major highways to impact the Canadian economy if Har Harper government's going to ignore the Indigenous people. To my survivors, to my uprisers, yet to my savages banging on the colonizer. We the survivors, we the uprisers.